What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross Becker again with another video. So we're going to check out how Adam will book Edge retirement. This should be a good one, man. I am looking forward to this. As soon as I uh, saw that he made this video, I definitely wanted to check this out. We know Edge is about to hang it up soon in WWE. So I would love to see how he would have booked his retirement uh, going forward, man. Um, if he was in control of WWE creative. His booking decisions are are usually uh pretty spot on or whatnot and i appreciate his ideas that he comes up with a lot of times i'd be wishing that uh it would happen that way but a lot of times it doesn't but we're gonna check this out edge is a certified legend a goat one of the goats in wrestling and you know i feel like his retirement his end like his uh his final run in the company you know final matches and feuds it should have some meaning behind it so i'm very interested to see how he would do this because I, I think he's gonna kill it appreciate all love and support we're gonna get right into this one let's do this thing <laughs> if his hall of fame speech isn't a live sex celebration what are we even doing although bloody hell if it's anything like beth phoenix's hall of fame speech then it'll be like a tantric sting celebration <laughs> no, not that Sting, the musician. You don't know about that. It's a very famous fact. Look it up on your phone. What do you mean we're rolling? <laughs> Hello, I'm Adam Hailing from Parts Far Known, and this is How Adam Would Book. And this time it's How Adam Would Book Adam, and how we all might cope living in a land without uh... the rated R. Super see what he did there. Super star. See what he Edge. did there. But first, a brief history of the third best Adam in all of professional wrestling. The man who was once known as Sexton Hardcastle on the <laughs> Indies. <laughs> That's wild. Sexton Hardcastle is used to be his name. That will always forever be funny when I first checked, found that out on a video. Sexton Hardcastle, bro. That's who would have thought? Sexton Hardcastle would be one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Made his debut for the WWF in June 1998 as Edge, a living embodiment of the 90s who would sit around for sure. and say things like, no one understands my pain. I only understand the city at night. And yes, I have heard of Nirvana. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Edge's first match saw him accidentally injure Jose Estrada's neck. Whoops. Edge's first pay-per-view match was teaming with Sable at SummerSlam, which didn't make sense. He was a lone wolf, but you go, Glenn Coco. A short while later, in your house breakdown, Edge lost a match to Owen Hart because he was distracted by a man who the commentator said looked a lot like him, and that would be Christian, a man that Edge had known in real life since the age of 10. Ah. Edge and Christian would be glued at the hip for the next few years, starting as kayfabe brothers who swore fealty to their vampire mm -hmm. lord Gangrel, because it was 1998, and Blade had come out in 1998. Although, yeah. fun fact, the name Gangrel actually came from the tabletop role-playing game Vampire the Masquerade, and there was a clan in it called the Gangrel Clan, and wrestlers have always been f Dorks. Edge and Christian <laughs> were Brood Edge and Brood Christian for a while, although mm -hmm. no one ever called Edge Brood Edge once, apart from at WrestleMania 39, which was really weird. Oh, shoot! Brood Edge! The thing literally says Brood Peach Edge! Peach, 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 Peach. They feuded with the Hardys. Edge and Christian did, got super over thanks to their ladder match at No Mercy 1999. And then Facts. they turned heel in 2000 after making even more of a name of themselves as a team thanks to the three-way ladder match at Mania 2000, which was TLC in all but name. They did the super comedy heel for the benefit of those with flash photography, mm -hmm. doing wonderfully dorky things all through three more TLC matches at SummerSlam 2000, Mania X7, L SmackDown in 2001, before Edge won King of the Ring 2001, which coupled with a savage rinsing from Grandma Edna, sent Christian in a jealousy spiral, and then the team quit with Edge getting the Intercontinental title and a prolonged push, while Christian got, well, he got his opera theme, Christian. Christian, I know what I'd rather have. In 2002, Edge became a benchmark of SmackDown, one of the vaunted SmackDown 6 with Benoit, Angle, Mysterio, and Los Guerreros. In 2005, things drastically changed for both men, Edge and Christian. Edge, mm -hmm. now a heel, won the first ever Money in the Bank. Christian actually left the company that same year to head to TNA, where he also had an NWA world title run. Edge held the briefcase for almost a year, during which the Matt Hardy scandal came to light, which yeah. allied Lita and Edge together, and they were a huge pair. Lita and Edge. 
I mean. Edge won the WWE Championship twice in 2006, losing it both times to John Cena, <laughs> who rated RKO then happened, then shortly yeah. after Edge just started winning the World Heavyweight Championship like it was a f***ing job. Seriously, yeah. between May 2007, when he cashed in Mr. Kennedy's money in the bank contract on The Undertaker, where he won the WHC for the first time, and between that point and Edge retiring just four years later, he won that belt seven f***ing times. That's fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> he won. That's crazy, bro, how many times Edge has won the World Heavyweight Championship. That's wild. <laughs> Will you calm down, Edge? In 2009, <laughs> Christian returned on WWE's ECW with the worst commentator call of all time. Literally, after four years of being gone, Christian walks in, the commentator goes, it's, it's Christian. Like, he's yeah. just been given the wrong video yeah, game. Yeah, nah, that, that was so anticlimactic. It's Christian. Must be hype for it, bro. <laughs> Christmas. I said, Grandma, I wanted Edge. Speaking of Edge, Christian wasn't Edge's brother anymore. They yeah. were just good, good friends. friends. He'd yeah. already had neck <laughs> issues, like going back to 2003 in a ladder match with Eddie Guerrero on SmackDown. But they came to a head in 2011 after spearing Brodus Clay. Edge injured his neck, and shortly mm -hmm. after, after an MRI, Edge was diagnosed with cervical spinal stenosis, which meant he was one wrong bump away from potential paralysis. On the April 15th episode of SmackDown in 2011, Edge retired from in-ring competition. A month later, he helped Christian win the vacated World Heavyweight Championship for the first time ever at Extreme Rules before disappearing into Legends contract limbo. Now, in this time, Edge did one key thing of note. He made Money Plane, a film where he had to heist billions from an airborne casino catering to the world's biggest criminals and do it to satisfy Fraser Crane. Money Plane is not as good a film as I've just made it sound. In 2020, <laughs> after being sick and tired of this mother retirement on this mother money plane, Edge returned at the Royal Rumble to one of the most wonderful pops of all time. For sure. Yay! Looking more ripped than he ever had. You can break chestnuts on that tummy. He got into a feud with Randy Orton, which resulted in one very boring last yeah. night standing match at WrestleMania, and one decent greatest match ever before going down to another injury. He returned again, yeah. won the Royal Rumble in 2021, which saw him reunite with Christian. Ah, albeit in front of a bunch of screensavers, which mm -hmm. really let things down. He lost at Mania to Reigns, lost at Money in the Bank to Reigns, had a great feud with Seth Rollins. For sure. On Judgment Day, got kicked out of Judgment <laughs> Day and immediately, had his wife killed by Judgment yeah. Day, and then Brood Edge beat Finn Balor at Mania, leaving Edge with not much to do, but yeah. in his own words, wind down his career. Edge is apparently ready to go. Well, before you do, let me have a go. All right, let's see how he would do it, man. I know he's going to do a good job. Well, actually, this is a story of how I'd like to retire Edge twice. Once in WWE and once, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Edge has done pretty much everything in WWE. Money in the Bank, two Royal Rumble wins exactly 10 years apart. The only thing uh -huh. he hasn't done is dethrone Roman Reigns, but he's not the guy for that. Whoever finally gets that honor, and at this point, if it isn't either Cody Rhodes or Jey Uso, then our entire species gets an F. Whatever happened, <laughs> it shouldn't really be a legend pushing 50 on a run that definitely is more accomplished than the term nostalgia run implies, but that is pretty much what it is. So I'm looking to close down Edge in a way that pays homage to all of his accomplishments and maybe ends things with a few mirrors from his past. A new record set, perhaps, whilst also putting over someone in a way that feels specific to the rated R superstar. So we start before Money in the Bank, and I know this will come out after Money in the Bank, but it's actually being filmed before so that our lovely patrons get a month's early access to it. And hey, you could be a patron, then you could see next month's booking video a month early. Hooray, patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk. On SmackDown, before Money in the Bank, Edge pulls up a chair and talks about the last three years of his life. When he came back, he wasn't sure there was a place for him anymore. He thought the younger guys were gonna eat him alive, but he was wrong. He could go and he ended up going longer and harder than maybe he ever had before. But that comes with a cost. He can feel himself slowing down. He can feel that final bell calling. Wrestling has always been a sickness for Edge, always been something in the blood, an itch that would drive him insane. That would take him on the road, away from his wife, away from his two daughters, Lyric and Ruby, but as he creeps towards 50, after WrestleMania, he felt he started to calm down. The itch started to go away, maybe enough that Edge could go away. After WrestleMania, after finally putting to bed his feud with the Judgment Day, he was getting ready to hang it all up, but then Hunter went and made a big mistake. He brought back mm. the World Heavyweight. Not gonna lie to you, I do wish 
Part of me do wish uh, they had the tournament to see who was going to go to the finals to win win the World Heavyweight Championship. I kind of do wish he was one of those people to win it. I, I don't think any, not many people would have tripped if he did win it as his final run since he's the guy that's <laughs> held the championship so many times, even though they don't carry on the lineage. It's basically the World Heavyweight Championship, but a newer version of it. I think it would have been beautiful, a beautiful moment for him to at least win that and kind of, you know, finish off his career that way and then maybe put somebody else over. But, you know, I'm okay with Seth having it, but I wouldn't have tripped if it was Edge. Championship. He brought back the belt that Edge never lost. He brought mm -hmm. back the belt that Edge held more than any other wrestler alive. The belt that only the threat of permanent paralysis could take. Yeah. from Edge. Triple H could have just let it die and maybe Edge could have walked away, but the itch is back. The itch, the itch, the itch is back. What? <laughs> Edge wants a shot at Seth Rollins and he wants it now. Triple H and Edge have a face to face. <clears throat> Triple H reminds Edge, sure, you might have the most reigns with that belt, but remember whose belt that really was. Remember who mm. debuted with that belt. Remember who made that belt famous. Remember this number, six, one, six. That's how many days total that I was mm. world heavyweight champion. Me, not you. That's the championship ridiculous. is exclusive to Raw, so you will stay in your lane. There will be no brand switching. You and Cody have had up to here. However, Edge does indeed qualify for the Money in the Bank match and thinks this is his opportunity. The ultimate opportunity. Whoa. Almost 20 years ago, he was the first winner of the briefcase. Mm. This time, in his final run, he will oh. use that briefcase to take back the World Heavyweight Championship and end his career right on his terms. And Money in the Bank, Edge takes great care to not be involved in any insane spots, please. And without Obviously. currently spoiling it, though, he doesn't win the ladder match. Someone yeah. else does. I know who it is. You currently don't. Deal with it. We fast forward to <laughs> SummerSlam, and Edge is becoming slightly desperate, growing his hair out a little, starting to go back to that mm -hmm. old wide-eyed edge the first <laughs> Chris all the way back in 2005 his long-term buddy Rey Mysterio tells him Edge you're taking all of this stuff too personally Edge slaps Rey Mysterio him and Rey wrestle on Smackdown reminiscent of the good old days in Smackdown 6 at SummerSlam Triple H announces a Raw exclusive battle royale to determine the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship still held by Seth Rollins at SummerSlam Seth fights Finn Balor running back their match from SummerSlam 2016. Everyone is making their way down to the ring for this. That's crazy because that's what happened pretty much. <laughs> battle Royal. And it's a new day. Yes, it is. Boom. Kofi Kingston finally makes his return to Raw after suffering his ankle injury before WrestleMania. He's heading down to the ring when he's blindsided from behind by Edge, who mm. hits Kofi with a chair and then runs into the ring to be part of the Battle Royal. And if you're too young to know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is such a good callback. And people would have definitely posted that on Twitter. Kofi can't catch a break when it comes to Edge and chairs. Bro, he was supposed to enter an elimination chamber and got destroyed by Edge. Bless you. It was back in 2009 where Edge beat up Kofi to take <laughs> Kofi's spot in the World Heavyweight Championship so Elimination Chamber up. match, which Edge then won. It's a... Uh... Both men still wrestle today. It's f***ing mad. But hey, the story beats are there. The Battle Royale comes down That's to funny. Edge and Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakas goes for the Kinshasa. Edge ducks it, hits the spear, throws him out. Edge is the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. On SmackDown, Triple H tells Edge, look, all right, I will let the results stand, but there have to be consequences. I refuse to let the mad men run the madhouse. You can have your World Heavyweight title match whenever you want it, but if you lose that match, you are done edge chooses the next week on smackdown august 18th mm. because that smackdown is set to and of course edge has history with seth so i like that i like that tie-in to where from toronto canada that's where edge is from sort of edge versus seth rollins for the world heavyweight title oh, what you say? Hold on. next week on smackdown august 18th because that smackdown is set to air from Toronto, Canada. That's where Edge is from. Sort of. <laughs> Edge versus Seth Rollins sort for the World Heavyweight title with Edge's career on the line. Big match feel. And even though Edge has been going heel for a little while, there's not a f***er in that building that will boo him because Canadians for sure, from for Toronto sure. really like other Canadians from Toronto. Isn't that right, Tempest? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> One idea for a spot, Edge goes for a spear, but Seth jumps over that spear and hits the curb stomp. One 
to kick out. Edge hits a curb stomp of his own, hits the spear, pins Seth for the one, two, three. Edge mm. is your new world heavyweight champion. Crowd will Canadian go crazy. celebrations, confetti in the shape of maple leaves rain from the ceiling, water cannons filled with Tim Hortons fire <laughs> into the crowd. Poutine from the heavens. Edge finally has regained the title that he didn't lose and he tearfully tells the crowd this is his final run. When he loses this title, He's done. But this time, he actually wants to lose it. He won't be forced to give it up by a doctor. This time, he ends his career the right way, on his back, looking at the lights before he hands over his title to whoever can beat him. Shake their hand. Then it will have ended the right way. Mm. Edge says that there's one thing that really stuck in his mind. One thing that Triple H said. 616. 616 days. In order for Edge to become the longest total reigning world heavyweight champion of all time to cement his legacy with that belt, he will need to hold it until Monday, March 11th, 2024. So there we have a nice six month mm. roadmap for Edge. Have him defend the title against all comers, use it as a chance to revisit classic matchups like Edge versus Rey Mysterio. Mm -hmm. He should definitely defend it against Kofi King. For sure. Once after all the times he screwed him over, but also bring up new stars by having them go 20 minutes with Edge on a major pay-per-view. Edge versus Johnny Gargano. Edge versus Bron Breaker. Tell a story that's similar to the story AEW are telling with Orange Cassidy with each defense. Edge is getting a little more worn down time after time. So we get to early 2024. Fast lane, Sunday, March 10th, the final stop before WrestleMania. And why not have it take place in Canada? Why not? Edge has tied Triple H's record on this day. All he has to do is retain the belt, carry it through to Monday Night Raw the next night, and he will be the longest cumulative reigning world heavyweight champion in history. That's Edge awesome. is defending in Canada against John Cena, closing <laughs> out his run. <laughs> of course it would be Mr. You Can't See Me, man. The one guy that always has given Edge problems, John Cena. Oh, man. <laughs> his best rival. Edge goes into it with tape ribs. He's really run down, but this is a finish line. He can see it inside. Yeah. He finally manages to beat John Cena clean. He's celebrating on the top rope in front of the Canadian. I would definitely mark out for that, bro, because Edge is, Edge is really had a tough run when it comes to John Cena in the past. That would just be a, such a good, good feel moment. I would be so happy for that, man. And I think John John would definitely do the job for Edge, bro. Canadian crowd. <laughs> like John would we have no problem putting Edge over. The thing happens. When a bad thing happens. Let's rewind to Money in the Bank and the moment that Edge is about to snag the briefcase when his ladder is suddenly oh. pushed over by Rhea Ripley, allowing a man who's actually spent most of the match hiding to nab that briefcase, Dominic Mysterio. Oh, no! no. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Damien. No! Oh, my. Nah, bro. I... Uh, no, I uh, no, not not fucking Dom as world champion. Good God, no. Doing, and I'm not sorry. Sometimes you have to make people so angry, and oh, sometimes my God. you have to make Canadians oh, so angry. Oh my God! Isn't that right, Tempest. <laughs> no, one day short of breaking the record. No. The person who first turned heel against Edge all the way back in 2022. One of the legit best heels in oh wrestling right God. now. A sneaky little weasel who spends a year holding a briefcase with a beautiful, powerful, alternative woman as his partner. I just think it's too wonderful to not do it because we really need to not be afraid of occasionally doing the horrible thing. Especially <laughs> to a Canadian. That is a horrible thing. Oh, him as the world champion oh my. the nuclear heat he's getting now would be nothing compared to him in this in this fantasy booking land edge finally beating john cena about to break the longest reigning total combined reigning days as world heavyweight champion even though they didn't continue the lineage but just per this storyline only for him to cash in and him lose a day before breaking the... Oh, my God, bro. Ultimate heel heat. Like, people would legit probably want to, like, find this nigga Dom and, like, square up. <laughs> and this way, we get the rematch at WrestleMania. Edge is not going to go down like this. Edge 
versus Dominic. He gets one more shot to snatch that record. Either way, the next night on Raw, Edge will for sure be retiring from WWE. Will he be retiring as the longest reigning World Heavyweight Champion of all time? Or will he put Dom over at WrestleMania and cement a new Craven ultimate opportunist? Both answers work for me. I'll let you decide, but I think I'd rather mm -hmm. give Dom the heat because I love watching wrestling fans rage and oh, poor Canada. Bless their little hearts. So in this case, Edge is done in WWE. He departs. And that's 90% of this booking. But I just want to mm -hmm. mention one more match. One more match. One more match. Because actually, if we use Edge to put over someone on his way out of WWE, then I would like to have one pay-per-view match. It's just a proper celebration of Edge, but not just of him. Of a division that he was a part of that at when he was a part of it, it was the division's peak. What I want to see is... Adam Copeland head over to AEW for mm. one, precisely one match. And that is an everything must go joint retirement tag team match at Double or Nothing. Edge and Christian versus the Hardys. Yep, I'll be for it. It's not a ladder match because Jesus Christ. No. It's a tag match where no matter who wins, all four men will retire in a love letter to an all time oh, bro, great era. Fucking hell yeah. Tag team wrestling. For all sure. All the way back to No Mercy. 1999. I would love to see that. All off, and the two teams that made WWE in 2000 one of the best places to be. If it happens in 2024, then it will be 25 years since Edge and Christian versus the Hardys. Edge and Christian pick up the win because it's Edge. I think he's got the highest standing of all four men. But then they all embrace each other. Two tag teams that have known each other and come up in the business together and have known each other for all of their lives. I just think it's a nice little moment. I know Edge doesn't really have a place in AEW. Yeah, he's always nah. been a WWE guy. But the idea of him being able to close it out with those three yeah, guys. Yeah, for sure. Just, I think it would make me cry. And that's <laughs> how I would book I Edge. probably would shed a tear too, man, bro. They're part of part of my childhood, man. A lot of our childhoods. Having Dominic win money in a bank and have him cash in on Edge would give him nuclear, nuclear heel heat. Love this uh, fantasy booking or how adam will book this was fantastic comment down below let me know did you guys like how adam would book edges for wwe retirement but i appreciate all love and support you guys showing on channel road 250k and i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on next one peace